Thank you, Candy, for singing such a beautiful song. Who would have known? I did not know. But thank you so much. How, how wonderful, how beautiful that was. To all of the family, we love you and are honored to be here today with you in honor of Sister Sharon Poe. Sharon Lynn Sermon Poe was born March 27, 1946, to Monroe Bryant and Gracie Mae Jackson Sermon. She passed from this life on May the 1st, 2020. She married Franklin Mack Poe on December 15, 1963. Together they had three children, James Poe, Alicia Gaines, and Dana Thompson. She was honored to be grandmother to Joseph and Ashley Smithers, Sean Smithers, Shaylin and Christian Ramirez, <clears throat> Jacob Gaines, Candace Thompson, Monica and Michael Watley, and Brianna Thompson. She was fondly referred to as Mammy by her great grandchildren. She was preceded or pre deceased by her parents, Monroe and Gracie Sermon. Brothers Carol Sermon, Charles Sermon, Warren Sermon, and her beloved daughter, Dana Rochelle. Poe Thompson. She is survived by her husband, Mac Poe, her son, James, her daughter, Alicia, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, siblings, Sarah and Wayne Willingsford, Kathy and James Willingsford, David and Pam Sermon, Virginia and Stephen Beatty, Stephen Sermon, Daniel Sermon, and Joy and Roger Morris, and a basket full of nieces and nephews, great nieces and nephews, and great, great nephews and nieces. Sharon attended Calvary Church of Denton, where she was Mama Poe to many, if not all, and was a great blessing to this church family, Grandma Poe to all who knew her. She loved all as her very own. We miss you, Mama Poe. There is coming a day when no heart ache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that high. What a day, glorious day that will be. If you know it, help us sing this morning. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who says, Oh, there'll be no more sorrow there, no more burdens for you to bear. There'll be no sickness, no more pain, and no more parting over there. Hallelujah! And forever I will be. For me, oh, what a day, a glorious day that's gonna be. Somebody sing it like you know. What a day that, that will, will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon the Lord, I look Hallelujah. upon his face, He's the one who saved.
church for about 25 years automatically when she came she became one of calvary's favorites favorites she had such a dry sense of humor an inspiring personality if you talk to her she was constantly encouraging you and speaking faith into your life I could tell you so many stories personally that happened with me. So first of all, I'm gonna share one. I'll never forget sitting down here on the front row and after service one day she walks up to me. This is gonna change every one of your lives. And I really don't want any of you bringing it up personally to me again. Only Sister Poe, I let her get by with it. She walked up and she goes, Sister Hudson, is that more blonde hair? Or is that really white hair coming in? I just looked at her and I said, really? 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 She goes, but Sister Hudson, you've got to embrace getting older. This hadn't been that long ago, boys and girls. It hadn't been that long ago. She said, you've got to embrace God's goodness. Because even in getting older, God is good. God is good. Had she said those words to you over and over again? Well, here at Calvary, it's already been said once. We have a tendency to have nicknames for some of God's finest. I'll never forget when Pastor's mom was with us. She was Nana Hudson. She was not Charlotte Hudson. People would go visit her in her home, and uh, they would say, I'm here to see Nana Hudson. Well, you know what? It didn't even take the nursing home long to understand Charlotte Hudson was Nana Hudson, right? That's what it was. Then we have Renata Dowdy, which is Oma to everyone. Everybody give it up for Oma. I'll never forget when somebody put her real name on the church attendance. I went, who is this? How do I not know someone's name if they're already on the church attendance? But it was dear sweet Oma. So I said, please put her name as Oma. But Sharon Poe became grandma to just about everyone in this church, regardless of how old you were or how little or young you were. She was Grandma Poe. Many of the people here in Calvary don't have a lot of family here in Denton, Texas. So I was so thankful and embraced to call her grandma myself. My children called her grandma, and it was a pleasure. There's just a few things I could sit here and tell you. Grandma Poe, she loved shopping. Can I get an amen? Amen. She loved Coke Zero. She loved sweet potato fries. Oh, she did. She loved a crochet, and she loved Mexican food. She loved her sweet friend, Felipe, that became known as Mr. El Chico, and you could see her out with him on numerous occasions. Now he's known as Mr. Villa Grande, and I'm sure they had lunch numerous times together. Now, this lady, she could bake. 
She told me, Angie, on more than one occasion, she said, don't ask me to cook nothing for any church get-together, but I can bake. She said, I love to bake pecan pies. And she became famous for baking her pecan pies. And they were the most beautiful. Not only did they taste delicious, they were beautiful. They were perfectly had all the pecans were in a round circle, and they were just perfect. Well... Me being the industrious that I think I'm a good cook, I'm a good baker, I said, Sister Poe, could I please have your recipe? So she gives me the recipe, and the next holiday comes around, and I'll be honest, I made that pie. It was horrible. Monica, I hear you laughing right now. Monica, she knows what I'm fixing to tell y'all. My pie was just runny. It was runny. And I'd call Sister Poe, Sister Poe, what's wrong? Cook it three to five more minutes. Stick a knife in it. I'm telling you, it was burnt around the edges, and it was still soupy. But Patrick and my son-in-law partake and even ate it with a spoon. They said it, even though it was runny, it was still delicious. It was still delicious. So she, <laughs> Grandma Paul goes, I'm coming to your house next holiday. And she goes, you just did something wrong. You did, you did something wrong. So I said, okay, come on over. So Sister Poe comes over to my house, and I'm sitting there, and I'm making the pie and putting all the ingredients in. So I'll never forget, I get to the flour. And, you know, everyone just has their own way of doing things. Well, I was always taught if it called for a tablespoon of something, you took the knife and you leveled it off because that made a difference. So instantly after I'd already done one tablespoon, her personal recipe called for three tablespoons. She goes, no, 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 that's what's wrong. That's what's wrong. I said, what? What did I do wrong? She goes, you got to do heaping big tablespoons. Heaping. So when you got her heaping tablespoons, you know what, Chelsea? It was about six tablespoons. So no wonder my pecan pie was runny and nasty. But I still count on Monica. Thank you, Lord, for baking the pecan pies. You find your ministry and you stick to it. So thank you, Lord. But on behalf of Sister Poe's husband, Matt Poe, he said, I want to tell each and every one of you, thank you for honoring my dear Sharon today in my absence. Oma said, I will miss you, Sharon, at church. I will miss going out and eating lunch with you at all of our favorite places. I love you, Oma. Angie and Larry Dexon said, we will miss having our conversations with you. Thank you for always being our friend. We love you. Oh, this next one, get your, get your hankies out. Leon Washington said, Sister Poe was the first person I met in 1976 walking into the church doors of Life Tabernacle, Denton, Texas. And then 40 years later, I walk into Calvary Church doors, and who do you think the first person was that got up out of our seat and grabbed me and hugged me and said, Leon, Leon, is that you? Oh, welcome to Calvary Church. What can I say, Leon said, but heaven has gained someone who lived a holy lifestyle, an anointed angel. I love you, Leon Washington. Lisa Steinbach says, oh, Sister Poe, she was the queen mother when it came to making peanut brittle. Do not mess with her method of getting the job done. Her recipe and those bags that we put that peanut brittle in, she said she had her way of doing it and there was no telling her we could do it any different. She was a sticker on the correct butter, the correct packaging, because it spoke of Calvary Church. David Knight said, I will always remember Sister Knight as a saint of God who carried the vision and the love of Calvary Church. She carried in, in her heart esteem. She loved all, loved each and every one of you. So my hat is off for such a great saint of God. The Paris family said, oh, Sister Poe was such a beautiful lady. She always spoke of the goodness of the Lord, and he was good all the time. Her spirit, I want everybody to listen, her spirit at work 
and at church was always the same. She had a true, genuine love for her family, her friends, her co-worker, and her church. Our family will miss this dear lady greatly. Sister Poe was a big reason that our family is at Calvary today because every time we saw her at Walmart, at the grocery store, she constantly would remind us of how much she loved us and how much Calvary Church loved us. The Morrow family said, to our family, Sister Poe was just known as Grandma. Grandma. She was a beautiful woman, always sharing her Jesus with everyone she knew. A beautiful example of what God looks like. I think I need to say that again. Sharon Poe, Grandma Poe, was a beautiful example of what God looks like. You were loved by our family. We will miss you always. Billy Thompson said, Oh, dear Sharon, I remember the first time I met you in July of 1983 when I came to Denton for a vacation to see Dana and meet her family. You and Dana pulled into the convenience store on Fort Worth Drive, and there I was waiting. Dana told me later, you were telling her, well, he's not too bad looking, but that man sure needs a haircut. You don't have to worry anymore, he said. Uh, I don't necessarily always have to have a haircut. You've treated me like a son, not only as your son-in-law. Even after Dana's passing, you would tell me, you're still my son. You're still my son. But I really need to apologize for all the times that I would break in and finish your joke before you finished your joke. And just P.S. I hope they have a Walmart or Joanne Fabrics store in heaven and that the angels keep all that yarn stocked up for you and Dana because I know how that works out in the middle of the night when you start running out of thread. You are truly missed. Please give Dana a big hug from me. I love you, Billy. Rachel Knight says, Sharon Poe was always in my corner. I miss sitting on the pew with her after service, soaking in her words of wisdom and her love for truth. I've never seen anyone give any more. She gave it to it, hurt and then she still found the courage and the strength to go beyond that. Her mercy still breaks in me. It pushes me to become a better woman, a better mother, a better friend. But some of my favorite memories will always be at ladies' conference at In-N-Out Burger. And all I have to say for those of you that were there animal style <laughs> no one go google it no one can, but she just could not get it it was so funny she laughed for three days i'm telling you all the truth no one could make you laugh anymore and she was confident that nothing in this world could steal her joy sister poe grandma poe you will forever be in my heart i love you rachel the Bradley family. Sister Poe was a great source of encouragement and support to me and my family. One memory of her strength and courage was at the bedside of Dana. After Dana's passing, Sister Poe was sitting in a corner and she just began to sing. You're good. Lord, you're so good. Lord, you're so good to me. I will continue to thank you because you're good, you're good, you're good. Even in her pain and sorrow, she continually offered up a praise to the Lord that she loved. Belinda Trevino had some of the same experiences. She said, I'll never forget going to the hospital 
to see Dana, not realizing it was Dana's last day. So when I arrived, I purposely went to encourage Sister Poe. But guess what? It's only as a Grandma Poe, a Sharon Poe could do to you. She turned the tables on me. And right there, she began to encourage me. She began to speak life into my heart. That was our sister Poe. She was selfless, always thinking of others. I will never forget that time that I spent with her. She was always such a blessing. And I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that she and Dana are walking and dancing on those streets of gold. Oh, Grandma Poe loved to give gifts. And as others have already said, she would give till it hurt. And if you knew anything about her, her favorite days at the mall was when Macy's had a red apple sale. She would go and she would stock up on gift items that were on sale. Therefore, she always had a gift already purchased when she saw a need or she just wanted to be a blessing to someone. I go back to my own memories at ladies' conference and she would stay in my room. Oh, these were some of my fondest memories with that lady. Ladies and gentlemen, Grandma Poe knew how to party. She knew how to make you laugh. She knew how to bring comfort and peace as she began to pray and speak on the name of the Lord. I'll never forget one particular time. I went looking for her and I was just in shock. Because our Grandma Poe at ladies' conference turned into a Vesta Mangan. God would give her new strength. He would give her comfort and peak and boldness. And she would speak into each and every one of our lives of those conferences. The last time that we got to be at a conference together, I went looking for her. But I found Grandma Poe amongst the ladies of Calvary. There she was laying hands on each and every one of them. She was praying peace, comfort, and wisdom into their lives. She was telling them over and over again, don't give up on your family. Don't give up on the desires of your heart. Remember, God is good all the time, all the time, no matter what the situation is. So, ladies and gentlemen, I challenge you today. Who will fill the shoes of Grandma Poe? Who will remain confident that our God is good all the time? Oh, yes, he is.
that's what Sister Poe would do. She would clap her hands and she would begin to worship the Lord. She knew that God was good. She lived a life understanding it. Come on, sing. All the time, all the time. She told me this. You song. are good. You are good. All the time, all the time. You are good. Would you stand with us all over the building for just a moment? Would you stand with us for just a moment? The reason we stand, we stand to honor a life worth honoring today. For who you are, for who you are, for who you are, yes, for who you are, for who you are. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, glory. You're good in the morning. Hallelujah. You're good in the evening. Hallelujah. Yes, you are. Yes, you Praise are. the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It was in one of the last services that Sister Sharon Poe was able to be in service with us. This song was sung. I saw her as she slowly rose from where she was seated. And she began to clap her hands and she kind of had a, a little bit of trouble with her right side, if you recall, but she would clap her hands and she would, she would worship with us. Then I saw her step out. She came down, she didn't run down, but she came down to the front. Sister Hudson, you'll remember, she stood right around here. She could barely stretch her right hand out. You know, y'all understand. She had some a malady. She fell and had broken her right arm or shoulder. She came down front and she got a handkerchief. She started out right about here. She was singing that song as these kids were singing on this platform. And as the unction of the Holy Ghost and the power of God started blessing her life that handkerchief got a little higher Sister Marion at the end of the song she had that hand she could barely raise over her head and she was just worshiping God to beat the band I'm here to tell you right now tonight in heaven Sister McLean Sister McKinnis and Sister Poe are dancing before the throne and they're worshiping God in spirit and in truth. What a great and glorious time. We have more to go to heaven for today than we've ever had in our entire life. I pray that I would be faithful till that day comes. You can be seated. Thank you so much for standing in honor of a life that's worth double honor. I won't take much more of your time today, but we could talk all day to the precious family that's here today. We love you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for honoring your precious family member along as she was our family member as well. Matthew chapter 23, verse 11, and I'll hasten. Simply says, says this, he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Did you hear what Matthew chapter 23 says, verse 11? 
He that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Sister Poe was truly a servant of the Lord. Nothing describes my great friend better than this verse of scripture. She spent her entire life serving others. I really don't know how many Toyota Priuses that she wore out. Now, I don't know if that was her choice or Brother, Brother Mac enjoyed having a Prius and put her in that as a very safe car. And she run the wheels off the Toyota Prius family. And she would be a great spokesperson, role model for them. She served this church, I got to looking at it, exactly 28 years. It's one of the closest things we have to a charter member here at the church. She never caused her pastor any grief. Quite the contrary. She was a great encourager. And she loved us with an unfailing love. She was a true friend. Is there anybody here that could lift your hand and say, Sister Poe was a true friend to you? Is there any witnesses here today? The Bible says that we are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses to every hand that was raised. True friend. What constitutes a true friend? A true friend is constituted. Constituted by simply this, those that will stay with you, those that will believe in you and they don't abandon you. Now, we have all had fair weather friends in our life. You know, they're with you as long as you got plenty of money, you're successful, and you're happy. Then when things go wrong for you, they move on to the next happy person or the next person that has money. <laughs> But a true friend, on the other hand, stays with you through traumas, disappointments, mental health crises, and physical illnesses. They don't abandon you just because it's easy to move on or be more comfortable to avoid you. Because a true friend truly cares about you. They actually want to be there when you're going through a difficult time. You know, I pray that I can be a true friend to somebody today. Is there anybody here today? That it's your heart's desire to be a true friend to somebody. You want to be there for them when they're going through sickness. You want to be there for them when they're going through a, a tough time. I want to be a true friend. Can somebody say amen? They care more about what you're going through. More than they care about how fun. How exciting. Or how much money you actually have. A true fr friend isn't around simply for things you have in your life, they're around for you, just for you. Sister Poe was around just for you. She was a dedicated servant, ardent. And I want to talk about her life for just a few minutes, and then, and, and then we're, we're just going to celebrate here for just a second. So when your life gets more challenging and you find yourself feeling down or overwhelmed, you won't have to go through these challenges alone because if you have a true friend in your corner, this will be the unforgettable aspect of your life. True friends. Amen. Sharon was a true friend to me, true friend to my family, my children, to all of you that are here. It's obvious and noted that she was a true friend to you too. I don't know what could be better said of a person. Then they were true blue, authentic, they were real, and they were a great friend. Can somebody say amen to that? If she was your friend, I'll mention this just briefly. If she was your friend, you knew her to be giving heavenly days. So Hudson said it right. She'd go down to, down to Macy's and she'd buy gifts for no apparent reason. I don't know what Brother Poe thought about that. Brother Mac, I don't know. I don't know if she hit him in the trunk of the car or what, but... She would buy gifts for no apparent reason. But then when she found out it was your big day, maybe a birthday, or anniversary or something, boy, here would come Michael and Macy's back, come to your house. And boy, I'm going to tell you something. Sister Poe didn't get no shabby gifts. She gave the best gifts. She gave crystal and china. And, and did I say crystal and china? We got more pieces of that at our house. And we think of her every time we walk by the china cabinet. She was selfless. She never thought of herself, not for one minute. Never. 
never thought of herself. She was caring. I don't know if any of you really realize early on before, you know, uh, the, the last several years of her life, she was the original lunch lady. She was. She was a lunch lady to thousands upon thousands of children who grew up generationally as she worked for the Denton Independent School District, maybe other school districts, I'm not sure. But she served lunches and dinners in a prolific fashion. She was so very caring. She was steadfast, loyal, and she was an ardent defender. Now, buddy, if she loved you, amen, if she believed in you, she's the person who would fight an alligator for you. She really wouldn't. She wasn't timid or shy about it. And all of you grandchildren and great-grandchildren, grandnieces and nephews and brothers and sisters, honey, she would fight for you. She was in your corner. And let me tell you something. If she gets the commission as a guardian angel today, she's over watching you right now and fighting for every day that you would live for God, love God, and be the kind of friend to somebody that she was to you. Can somebody say amen? She was compassionate, loving, and above all, faithful. Always putting others first before self. She loved to eat out. That's already been said. We were great, fast friends because we loved to eat out together. The reason she loved to eat out is because she was tired of cooking. When you have served tens of thousands of people over your career, you do not want to cook anymore. You do not want to serve any meals. You don't want to go anywhere where you have to serve anything. And uh, you just want to eat out. So listen, don't begrudge people that like to eat out. Just go with it. Grandma had a reason for liking to go eat out. She cooked all of her life. She, whether you knew it or not, was a night owl. The times that she would call me after 11 p.m. at night. I thought, heavenly days, what has happened? And, and when the phone would ring after 11 o'clock, I'd, I'd do that with anybody, but, you know, with somebody like her that you, you know, was kind of fragile and you care about them really a lot. And she'd ring my phone after 11 o'clock at night. And I'd say, yeah, uh, yes, ma'am. That's how I'd answer the phone. Yes, ma'am. Brother Hudson, I was just thinking about you and Sister Hudson tonight. And it's been a long time since I baked y'all anything. And I've got a pecan pie sitting over here on the counter. And it just cooled off. Just enough for me to give it to you. Would it be all right if I came on over there right now and brought it to you? And I'd be in my PJs or already, and I'd say, absolutely. I'm dressed, and I'm ready to receive you and that pecan pie right now. I didn't tell her how I was dressed, but I would run in the closet just like Superman, and I would change, and I'd get all, you know, preacherified and she would come to the door and she said I hope that I wasn't bothering you I said oh no why don't you come in okay <laughs> and for she'd bring that pie Kenny and stay for about two and a half hours just talk about everything and it was so awesome man she knew how to take care of her pastor she loved to play pranks on her friends just to see their reaction. She was like me. She loves Coke Zero. Everybody who loves Coke Zero is awesome. She loved her husband, Brother Mac. She loved you. Beyond measure. And I know you loved her. She loved her children. It is obvious because no one proved it more. She loved her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, beyond our ability to frame the words. You cannot sum up the life of a person that's great in just a few brief moments. However, I believe there's one scripture that defines Sister Sharon, John 15, 13, and I hasten to finish. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. It is my firm belief that everyone or anyone that knew Sister Poe would agree that she was a paramount example of this scripture. She perpetually 
put others first. She laid down her schedule, her agenda, whatever she had going on in her life to make sure she took care of us. Can somebody say amen to that fact? She proved to us that there are people who possess this kind of love, the no greater kind. She laid down everything for others. We who are alive and remain have some mighty big shoes to fill, as Sister Hudson said. We rubbed shoulders with some of God's greatest and found them to be the servants of all. I want to ask this question before we go home today. And to all of you that are here, I know Sister Poe would be incredibly humbled and honored that you came and you shared your Sunday with her. Out of all the kind things that have been said and done of Sister Poe, what will be said of us when it comes our time to go? Will anyone think we were giving? Would anyone call us compassionate? Would anyone read this scripture and say they too had the no greater kind of love and they laid their life down for their friends. I pray that we would let these things that were said of her be said of us. Would you stand with us today? Among the things that I used to describe Sister Poe a moment ago, you remember giving selfless, caring, steadfast, etc. I saved her most endearing quality till last. I said loving and faithful. Now each of us, if we're not, at least we should be living a life to one day, one day have lived a life of so that is so valued before the Lord that we would hear him say these words well done and he won't choose among these other attributes that I've listed but he'll choose only one he'll say well done thy good and faithful servant then he's going to say what he's saying to sister Poe enter in enter in to the joys of the Lord. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes with me. Lord Jesus, Lord, I would like to simply say how honored I am to celebrate the life of someone worth celebrating. And in memorial, I would like to say, God, that I can't think of anyone in times past or times present that made a greater impact on our family's life than Sister Sharon Poe. I pray that all of her endearing qualities would become our own. I pray that her love beyond measure, her steadfastness as a true friend, and the fact that she was faithful would influence our lives beyond measure so that we too can one day hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We ask for your blessings of comfort and peace upon this family. For Brother Poe, we ask that you would overshadow him and comfort him as only you can do by your spirit. We ask in the days ahead that we would think of the good things and the exciting things and the wonderful things that were played out right before us in a life that was well lived. And we're going to be careful, Lord, in this atmosphere to go out and be a witness to others as Sister Poe was a witness to us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to thank each of you that have joined us today. Here in the sanctuary, many friends here, many acquaintances, many people I know that love Sister Poe just like, just like we do. I'm so sorry that everyone didn't have the chance to say something good because I know there would be something good that everyone could say. Can I say this as your friend? I love you. I thank you for being here. I urge you to have this same kind of love we talked about today. Amen. God richly bless you and thank you for joining us today at Calvary Church, a place for new beginnings. Amen.